In part three of our tutorial, we're going to add a little bit more. You can see that I've gone up to the top of my building and added a little bit of geometry just to make that a little bit more interesting here. But I'd actually like to add some other things, such as some stuff on the street, some lamp posts, some uh, trees maybe. Lots of other things can be added. We'll do something to make this a, a lot more interesting scene. Before we do that, though, it'd be really smart for us to triple click on our building and make this a component. This will be our building so that we know that we're not going to be interfering with this any. If we need to edit it, of course, we can double click, go inside the component and do whatever the heck we need. But we're going to add some other things such as um, maybe sidewalks and, and other things. So we'll begin by just maybe even creating just a very simple rectangle. If I can go here. There you go, there's, there's going to be our sidewalk. Might have to bring that up just a tiny bit. Of course, that means maybe we'll have to bring up our, our whole building just a tiny bit. And that's where it's nice to use the, um, what is it, the up arrow key. That way we make sure that it only goes in that one direction, straight up. Now, we can add some other things like, let's say, mailboxes and trees. Now, there are two ways to do this. One way I want to show you first is by using um, uh, materials. So I'm going to find a tree material here, and I've just looked for tree images. And here's a tree image that I found. And, and I'm going to check and make sure that this is a, a transparent PNG. Now, if you are lucky enough to be able to find a, a transparent PNG to download, great. You just save the PNG and then open it up with Photoshop and you'll see it is indeed transparent. Since it's transparent, we can definitely use this thing in um, SketchUp. So I'll make sure that I am outside of that building and I'm going to do File, Import and try and find that, that tree that I have there. And there's the tree and I can go ahead and place it and then scale it as need. And then it's a really good idea for me to take this thing and make it a component. So if I look at my components, let's make sure that that component is there. And you'll see it's not there yet. So I'm going to go ahead and explode this thing, select it again, right click, and then make a component. And this will be my tree one. So the nice thing about making a component as well is you'll notice as I rotate my scene, my tree is not rotating. And what I'd like to do is go to the properties of that um, particular material. I go to properties, and I want to make it so it always faces towards the camera. Now, anywhere I move, that particular tree will always face the camera. Now all I have to do is move that tree back to where it really needs to be. So it can be a little tricky. It looks like it's now on the scene the way we want it. And now we've got a tree that no matter where we move, that tree will always rotate. And that's really nice because it, it gives us a component, even from a flat um, from a flat image, we can have something that kind of acts as though it's three-dimensional. So add a couple more trees to your scene. Now, you can also make trees using plugins. I found a plugin called the RP Tree Maker. And I found this plugin at, if I come back to this, I found it at renderplus.com. They have this free plugin that you can use to create a whole bunch of different types of trees. So if I take a look at the tree editor, I can change the age of the tree, I can change the scale of the tree, the length of the tree, the thickness of the tree, all sorts of different things. And then you can decide what type of trunk, whether or not it is um, bent or not, horizontal. You can see that we can like bend them and change the height and the spread, which is kind of interesting. We can also change the, the foliage to make it larger or smaller. So anyway, when we're ready, we'll go ahead and render our tree. It might be hard to see everything because it's way down there at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and render this tree. So it's rendering a tree for me right now. And that's basically what it's going to look like. You'll see it's still going. And 
and we do need it to get all the way through the rendering process and it's kind of hard to tell when it gets through that process but eventually it will be done rendering and we'll be able to place this actually inside of our model looks like we're getting close it says 92.9 percent I believe that is the progress And to be aware that, of course, you can always remake the image, you can change your resolution, you can um, do a whole bunch of different things. Also, in advanced settings, you can do all sorts of stuff. So let's say that that's pretty good. I'm just going to say it's done. So I'm going to go to so stop. I'm going to save that tree image, go back to my SketchUp, and you'll see there's that tree. So I just made that tree. And you'll notice that these trees are automatically created as components that, um, if I go to my component window, here it is. Let me go to that particular tree. There's the standard tree. And you'll see it always faces the camera automatically. Now, we can also bring in models. So if I want to, I can look for a tree and I can find actual models to bring in as well. And that's actually a three-dimensional tree versus one of these two-dimensional ones. Now we can add other types of objects as well. We can look for uh, cars. So there's a, a nice little car to use. And it's actually just taking models from Wow, that's a really big car. So we're going to find that we need to scale that down for sure to fit our scene. Obviously, that's not a very good scaling of it, so I'll go back to scale, <coughs> change my scale. about right. So there's basically our new car. We just need to move it where it needs to go. So we use the M tool, the move tool, and bring it up. Might go ahead and bring it up with the blue, I mean the up arrow, then move. Green arrow will bring it out. So of course we can extend it, make it a little bit more interesting. So we're just adding things to our scene to make things a lot more interesting. You'll notice that picture that we brought in acts a little funny when we're moving around, but as soon as we um, stop, it fixes all of our materials. And it's just because of uh, memory running out. And it's a good idea also when you're working with this to save frequently, because of course the more stuff that you add, the more likely you are to make things um, a problem in software. And I also should point out that if you want, you can also go and look at images in the Google Warehouse. And these are pretty much the same thing that when you're searching in your component inspector, you're actually searching the Google Warehouse. Um, if you prefer, you can go to the Google search, the Google Warehouse, and you can download the models and you can import them. So here's a lamp post right there. So if I want to import this model, I'll download that skip file and I could possibly copy this so let's see if I can copy it and paste it into my model and I can so we can actually just bring it in that way that's a kind of small one at this point so we'd scale it up and just move it to where it needs to go So you can see we can really make our model much more interesting by adding more features to it. And I'd like you to add some stuff to your scene. 
so that you really enrich it. You can even add a couple models of other buildings around it to fill up the scene. And uh, when you are done, uh, go ahead and save your work and go on to the next tutorial where we're going to actually render this.